All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is show a somewhat more complicated script. Still nothing crazy. Remember, this is not a scripting course. Uh, I've shown you pretty much all I wanted to show in this section, which is the steps you need to go through to successfully set up a script. We already talked about that. Make a file, save it, put the shebang in there, make it executable with uh, change mode, and then make sure that it's added to your path or that the directory it's in is part of the path. But I do want to show something a bit more exciting. So we're going to use this API uh, that's set up to provide weather information in this really terminal-friendly format. Uh, it is called, well, I don't know, I pronounce it as weather.in, I guess, but I don't know why I would pronounce it that way. It's W-T-T-R, water, water, <laughs> dot in. So it's a service um, that we can request just like this in the browser. We can also provide a city afterwards like London and it gives us the weather for London here. By default, it gives us three days. I can also provide an option. If I do question mark, M1 will give me one day. Um, you can read more about, you can find documentation on GitHub for it, but we're not gonna worry about it. Uh, here it is, if you're wondering. So there are other options, different things that we can use. Now on the documentation, uh, they don't really show visiting it with your browser, instead, the docs show visiting using your shell, using your terminal. Specifically, they show a command called curl. So to get the, the weather in London, you can use this curl command. Um, depending on your distribution that you're using, if you're on a Mac, if you're using Ubuntu, you may or may not have curl pre-installed. I believe it comes pre-installed on a Mac. On Ubuntu, I don't think it does. I tried to research. Uh, I have it installed. I could not remember if I installed it myself. I think I did. Uh, so if you try just in your terminal typing curl uh, and you see something like this, where it does not say command not found, right? It's not telling you you should install curl. It's just giving me an error. If we see that, you have curl. If you don't see something that looks like this and instead it says command not found, uh, you can install curl with sudo and then apt-get install curl. Now I already have it, so it's just not gonna do anything. It says it's already the newest version. There's nothing to update. Um, so now that we have curl, hopefully, it might take a moment if you did have to install it. Let's talk about what it does. So it's a command line utility. Let's do man curl. It transfers a URL. We provide it a URL and it will make a request for us. It will make an HTTP request uh, to some website, to some URL, and then it's going to display the response back to us. So if you don't know a lot about requests and how the web works, not a big deal. Um, we're not gonna go into it, but if we request this URL right here, wttr.in, the way that we do that, if I clear, is curl, and then we provide a URL, wttr.in. And my text is made very large for recording this course, so it's kind of obnoxious, it's not optimized for this uh, weather information, but you can see it comes back and it displays right here. Let me shrink this down, I guess. Let's do preferences, uh, let's do a smaller font size maybe 20. All right, there we are. So it's showing me that response. Okay, but then I can also provide, um, you know, wttr.in and then slash Paris. And then we get the weather in Paris for today. Uh, actually, it's for the next three days. So today is Wednesday. So we're seeing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, if I instead do with the question mark M1, that's called a query string. This is just a, a parameter we can provide via the URL. It's showing me just one day's weather for tomorrow, morning, noon, evening, and night. Now there's a lot more to how this API works. We're not going to care about that. What I wanna do is make a simple script where I can just type weather like that, uh, or maybe even just WTTR. And then we might get even fancier where I could search for a location like, you know, uh, Austin and have it give me the weather in Austin. So to do that, I'm gonna make a new script and I'm gonna do that in my home slash bin folder that we just made. So I'm gonna call it weather and then I'll start with my shebang. So hash 
bang, there we are, and then slash bin slash bash. And then uh, we'll just start nice and simple. We're just gonna run curl wttr dot in, just like that. And the default weather uh, information that it will retrieve if we don't provide a location uses your IP address. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect for me. It's not quite right. It's a, a basically a county away from where I live, uh, but close enough. So uh, if we do that, we'll just save the file. We'll close out. We're going to come back and modify this. Uh, let's now change the permissions on weather. So change mode plus X on the weather file. And now let's try executing it. All right. So it's giving me the weather for my rough location. So now I'd like to do something a bit fancier. Remember, this is not a bash scripting course, so we're not going to get that fancy, uh, but I'm just gonna give you a little crash course on something to make this weather command somewhat more useful. I open the file back in nano again, and what I would like to be able to do is something like weather on its own, and then maybe weather dash H to get some help, and weather dash L uh, or maybe C, we'll have to figure out what option we want, but dash C uh, to specify a city and then followed by London. Or maybe we'll do dash L for location, London, or weather dash L uh, Paris, that sort of thing. So we can decide what we want those options to be, but I want to have at least one or two options. And there are many, or there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I'm going to show you the simplest, crudest way involving something called positional parameters or arguments. Uh, so there's this special value dollar sign one that I have access to in this script. And dollar sign one will have whatever the, the first value is passed as an argument after my program. So weather, and then this will be dollar sign one. And this will actually be dollar sign two. So uh, I can print out dollar sign one just really quickly. Uh, so why don't I just not even bother with doing this part? I'm just gonna comment it out just to uh, save my screen real estate when I run this command. So this won't run because that comment is in front of it. But what I will do is echo, and then let's do first value is, and then we'll just add dollar sign one. And then maybe another second value is, and then dollar sign two. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna save and close out. I'm gonna call weather on its own, they're both empty. Now I'm gonna do weather, and then how about dash H, or dash dash help. First value is dash dash help. Or if I had done dash H, dollar sign one is dash H. Now if I instead do dash L, and then Paris. Dollar sign one is dash L, dollar sign two is Paris. So with that knowledge, we now could use uh, dollar sign one when we're actually making uh, our request using curl. So I'm just gonna kill that all, get rid of that hash. And the way that this API is set up, if I go back here, I can provide a city, I know it's hard to read, but just a slash and then a city like Paris, it gives me the weather for Paris. So all I would do is put slash and then dollar sign one right there. So whatever we pass in as the first value to this command when we run it will then be added to the end of this slash in this URL and requested. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna save and quit, and I'm gonna try running weather and then Austin. And there we go, we are getting weather for Travis County, Austin, Travis County in Texas. Let's try it again with uh, weather for, how about uh, Madrid? There we are, we're getting Madrid's weather. Okay, pretty nifty. Uh, so that command itself, the actual script is a single line, um, but it is versatile already, right? It's accepting an argument. What if I leave off? I don't have a dollar sign one, it's just weather. It still works. It's just empty, right? That, that uh, if I do nano weather again, this just turned into nothing. So it's just this URL right there with a slash, nothing, and that's fine. That's how it's set up to work. That API doesn't care if you provide nothing. Um, but what I do wanna show you is that we can do some basic conditional logic. I'm gonna show you something known as a case statement. So a case statement 
Let's do it uh, maybe here. We're gonna have a couple cases. If you do a dash H, we'll provide some help information. Uh, so if that option, we will tell you, you know, here's how you can use this command. Uh, and then maybe, hmm, if you do a dash three, we'll give you all days, uh, or three days. And if you do dash one, we'll just give you one day, something like that. Because right now the default behavior is to give us three days of weather. Maybe we just want tomorrow. So this is one simple crude way of dealing with options. It's not really the best way, but it's the simplest and easiest to explain. Okay. So all that we do is write case and then dollar sign one in, and then down at the bottom, we actually write case backwards, ESAC, E-S-A-C. So inside of here, I provide a set of uh, different matches, different cases. So whatever dollar sign one is, the first thing that it could be uh, will be dash H. So if it's dash H or let's do dash dash help. If you provide one of those, then we need this weird closing paren there. If that's the case, then let's do something like echo, welcome to weather help. We can expand on this, but let's just do a single line that we echo, all right? And then we have this weird thing, two semicolons, and that tells Bash this is the end of this one case. So this is the end of what I want to run if dollar sign one, if the first argument provided, the positional argument is dash H or dash dash help, just echo this. But then I can have another thing down here like dash, um, what do we want, dash, how about dash three? So if dash three is what's provided, we'll just echo, um, you know, you provided dash three. We're not going to do anything yet. We won't bother making any requests to this API just yet. Uh, and then we need two semicolons again to say this is the end of what should happen with the dash three option. And then finally, we can use a star to say for every other case of dollar sign one, for every other value, let's just echo any other value or something like that. And then we still need those weird double semicolons. It's a very bizarre syntax. And if you have no program, uh, programming experience, then all of this is going to be bizarre. So don't worry. Remember, I'm just going light speed ahead just to demonstrate something slightly more exciting. It is not part of this course. It's not a core part of this course. So I'm gonna save and we'll see if we get any syntax errors. Uh, but just to recap this, whatever dollar sign one is, if it's dash H or dash dash help, do this. Or if it's dash three, do this. And if it's anything else, that's what the star means, do this. All right, and I commented this curl line out so we shouldn't actually be requesting anything. So let's clear and let's try weather. Okay, I didn't provide anything. How about dash H? Welcome to weather help. Dash dash help, welcome to weather help. Dash three, you provided dash three. Dash Z, any other value. We're just ignoring dash Z. So let's open that back up one more time. And this time, uh, if you provide dash three, let's actually make that request. Let's do, what should we do here? Uh, we, we don't need to echo that, but let's do curl WTTR dot in. And then um, we'll provide three, what should we do? I guess nothing, we just leave it like this. And that gives us three days by default, okay? But if you don't provide the dash three, let's get rid of this line. We'll do the same thing. We'll do a curl WTTR dot in, but we will provide question mark M one. So I want the default just to be one day of weather. You have to manually provide dash three if you want three days. So it's the opposite of how the API works. The default is three days. If you don't provide that question mark M one. Um, so you have to do that to get a single day of weather. Anyway, I'm gonna try this, we'll kill this line too. So the help has changed, or hasn't changed, but now if you provide anything other than dash H, dash dash help, or dash three, you get one day of weather for your current location. And let's try this. So if I just do weather, it gives me one day of weather tomorrow for roughly my current location. Now, if I do dash three, 
we get three days of weather. And then if I do dash help, or dash H rather, we get our very crude help that doesn't actually help with anything. So uh, the last thing that we'll add on, you know, you could add in here under help, we could do echo dash three for next three days of weather or something. And you could add more there, but that's good enough. But I want to add the dash L option we had talked about. So if you want to get a specific location, you could do weather dash L and then London. So uh, this would require us to use dollar sign two. Getting fancier. So our case is dash L. If you provide dash L or let's say or dash dash location. If that's the case, then we're going to do curl WTTR dot in and then we're going to provide a slash and then right here dollar sign two, which would be the second value, right? We want dash L and then a second argument would be London or Paris. So it's going to default. If you don't provide an option, it will use your current location. But if you provide dash L and then a city, we provide that city and we request that URL. So make sure we have the two semicolons, we save, we exit, and we pray that it works. So weather dash L London. And it looks like it's working. We are getting London weather. If I just do weather, I'm getting my current location for a single day. If I do weather dash three, cool. We're getting three days for my current location. Uh, and if I do dash help, we get our very, whoop, it's not dash help, it's dash H or dash dash help. We get our help, not very helpful help. Uh, now, there are problems with this. We are not going to fix them. This is gonna work fine for us, but there's an issue, right? I, I would love to be able to combine things and do weather dash three, or maybe I want, yeah, one day of weather for a city. So dash L and then uh, what's another city? How about Cologne? I want one day. It's giving me three days. I don't have an option right now to force it to do, to do one day. There are many other things that we could fix. I mean, the ordering of the options doesn't work great. Uh, it's purely based on position. Not really uh, the strongest way to structure a, a bash script, but this is just very simple. We're, we're not diving into the scripting, uh, the, the details of bash scripting, writing functions and dealing with fancy conditionals and fancy logic. Just wanted to show you something pretty simple um, and with immediate results. All right, but remember the main takeaway from this whole section is this. The shebang, writing a script, making it executable, and dealing with the path variable.